What's up? It's EK Wesco, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Family Values Tour 1999 on CD. This is the second Family Values Tour live album. It was released on May 23rd, 2000. The live album consists of Korn, Limp Bizkit, Primus, Red Men and Method Man, Stain, Filter, and Crystal Method. The tour itself also had performances by Ja Rule, Run DMC, and Mob Deep. DMX also filled in a time or two for Mob Deep that year. System of a Down and the Insane Clown Posse were supposed to have performances, but they never made the final roster. System of a Down left the tour because of a feud with Limp Bizkit, while ICP got kicked off. We got thrown out the Family Values Tour, and uh, now it's all out war. Seven Dust filled in for Filter while Filter was filming a music video. The tour lasted from September 28, 1999 to Halloween night. The final stop of the tour was Biloxi, Mississippi on Halloween night, and that is where the famous Stained and Limp Bizkit performance of the acoustic version of the single Outside was performed before the song's release. The performance itself gained so much mainstream attention that it created a big, enormous demand for Stain's next album, Break the Cycle. Primus and Korn weren't normally performing together. The album was produced by Jeff Quatinets and Bill Sheppel. I was given a copy of this album when I was six years old by my mom's boyfriend. He said that he attended one of the shows. He also taught me about some of the bands that were on the CD. He knew I would enjoy this CD because I really liked Limp Bizkit at the time. This CD was the CD that got me listening to Korn. This album in particular has attention grabbing artwork in the booklet. I like to read through it when I'm listening to the actual album because of its imagery. The booklet shows snaps of an infant in certain predicaments that would not be a keen environment for an infant. There's a picture of a baby taking shots, another baby smoking cigarettes, as well as one looking at porn, and one with a shotgun. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not tattoo your babies. At the very end of the booklet, a message from Fred Durst can be read about family values and morals. Because that's exactly who you want to listen to in order to raise a family, Fred Durst. The pages of the booklet also display pictures of the performances from the tour. The disc shows a placenta surrounded by sperm. The tracks on this particular live album are mixed to seem like they're one continuous performance, even though that is not the case. I think this was a way better alternative than most of those live albums that just drift in and out of fading from crowd cheering. It's an awkward silence, and it doesn't need to be there. This album kicks off with a strong performance of Break Stuff by Limp Bizkit. The song was performed in Kansas City in front of an eclectic crowd. They were obviously catching some serious Bizkit vibes. This song with this energy and this type of a crowd is just the perfect start for what this album needs. And then we go to a Promise performance done in Sacramento of a song called Lacquerhead. The band is just as thumpy and raw as you would expect it to be, and the crowd is just great. The breakdown after the second chorus makes this song almost seem like it's not gonna end, but you don't really want it to. This is a really kick-ass song about huff and paint. The third track documents Stain taking the stage with their single Mud Shovel. They bring a harder performance of the song on this live album than they did in the studio. After that song is over, Korn starts playing the song Falling Away From Me. This performance done in Kansas City was very, very nicely structured. The 808s hit just right for a song like this, but that's Korn's specialty. The album then goes from hard rock with hip-hop vibes to some serious hip-hop vibes whenever Wu-Tang's Method Man and Red Man take the stage and perform their big smash hit, Rock Wilder. This performance was done in Biloxi, Mississippi, and that's not necessarily a place that seems like Red Man and Method Man would make a big impact. It's not necessarily a hip-hop prone place. Nevertheless, the crowd there was catching the vibes. I would be surprised if a single rock fan that went to this show and saw Red Man and Method Man didn't like what they heard. Back in Kansas City, Filter then introduces their song, Hey Man, Nice Shot. This song is performed very heavy, and the vocal range of this guy is very magnificent on this particular performance. This song in its time was very popular and widely played on many radio stations across the US. After the song ends, you can hear Fred Durst directing the crowd to get their groove on a little bit before Limp Bizkit performs their single, Rearranged. The turntablist maneuvers that DJ Lethal performs on this track are so fucking strong and solid. I love this shit. The song has so many mellow vibes on it, despite being a breakup song. This is followed by another strong corn performance full of 808s and energetic performances by John Davis. The track starts off on Adidas and then segues into Good God almost seamlessly. On the next track, Primus is gearing up to melt faces in Sacramento with their song My Name Is Mud. This song's very strongly performed too. After Primus stops playing, we have what I like to consider the interlude of the album. Crystal Method does their song Keep Hope Alive. I don't necessarily know what the Crystal Method was doing on this tour, they're an electronic group. They were like the 90s era Daft Punk. But nevertheless, 
Anybody that did any psychedelics on the Family Values Tour probably saw the Crystal Method set and was very, very enthused. Then things calm down and Limp Bizkit takes the stage again to talk to the fans. The fans are far more attentive this time. Fred Durst is talking about the mainstream media portrayal of Limp Bizkit and how he's not satisfied with it. And then the band performs a cover of the Jane's Edition song, I Would For You. Then when the song stops, they immediately start playing their hit single, Nookie. This is one of the most popular performances of the song ever done, and also one of the most energetic. This song acts as the grand finale of this live album as it closes with a bunch of explosions and confetti everywhere, but for some reason the most popular track on this album is dubbed a bonus track. After hearing Nookie, it seems like the members of Limp Bizkit exited the stage except for Fred Durst. But what really happened is that we went from Kansas City to Biloxi to join Aaron Lewis as Fred Durst takes the stage with him to perform an acoustic version of a yet to be released single called Outside. Just like most people, I could have done without Fred Durst's hype man things, Biloxi, filling those lighters, I could have done without that. But nevertheless, the performance itself is pretty strong and Aaron Lewis does some pretty good vocal performances. My personal rating of this album would be an 8 out of 10. Every performance on this album is strong. I never find myself listening to just one or two tracks whenever I pop this album in a radio. I have to listen to the whole thing through. And that's it, I just went track by track and reviewed Family Values Tour 1999 on CD. If there's any album in your head that you would like to see me review, by all means, leave it in the comments. I would love to hear the shit that you guys listen to if I haven't already. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Some new music and reviews are coming your way. Peace.